Hello everyone and welcome to Messing with the Space Shuttle in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. I continue to experiment with the Giulio Dandi shuttle and the associated launch and re-entry scripts. The links will be in the video description. But first we are re-measuring the runway here at the KSC because previously I measured it without the static sitting on top. I have a nicer version of the runway on top of the basic one from Cape Canaveral HD. And so I was re-measuring it with the rover to make sure that the re-entry script would know where the runway is properly. That is something you have to do with your runways. And so there it is all marked out. And then we can turn to the launch. So the thing I'm experimenting with in this case is not the launch script. We'll just launch it normally. And we're going to a 28.6 degree inclination, which is the lowest you can get from Cape Canaveral normally. Uh, and we're carrying about a 15 ton payload and we'll just eject it out. We're going to be coming down empty. And the thing I'm going to vary is with the re-entry script, I want to bring it in steeper. Last time it rolled a lot. It rolled like more than 80 degrees and I didn't really want to see that. That indicated that I had a lot of extra energy. And looking at the records of the space shuttle, it seemed to come in at 1.2 to 2 degrees. 2 degrees was for the Hubble missions. Instead of the 1 degree that the re-entry script indicated was a good re-entry angle and so this time we're going to bring in at 1.4 and see what happens see how it deals with that and so here the boosters are separating and but i'm not going to change the re-entry location and so that's sort of a big variable here there are two things you can change how steep it is and where you do the re-entry burn and in this case, I'm not going to change where we're doing the re-entry burn. We're going to do the re-entry burn at the same place we would do it for one degree. But NASA might not have done that for different re-entry burns. They might have done it at different locations. And um, I might be able to find that data, but I don't have it right now. But here we are making orbit using the OMS engines. And of course, we're going to overburn a little bit in order to use up some of the extra fuel because we're not doing a full mission here and we would have too much coming down otherwise and then we pop out the payload at this higher height but i do want it in a one and a half hour orbit for consistent testing i keep getting it into the same orbit for now we'll vary the orbits later but i did have the launch script uh, changed a little bit the apoapsis was set to 285 kilometers instead of the lower altitude so that we would have a little bit of extra fuel here when i'm actually running missions with the space shuttle i will want the extra fuel and so i want the external tank to give us a little bit more of a boost than it did previously so anyway we uh, get into a nice little orbit and we wait today and then I've got the deorbit planner here. So the idea with the deorbit planner, and this is a different script than the actual deorbit script. And what we want is to have a dummy maneuver before you start the script. And then we're going to tweak things on that maneuver. Not that much. That's too much. Uh, we don't need that much delta V to come back down. But tweak things on the maneuver in order to get everything green is the general idea. But green for it is a one degree angle. And again, I felt that it had way too much energy like that and it did a lot of banking. It did a good job of getting to the runway. The flaw last time was that we accidentally had the drogue chute coming out and also the runway was measured wrong because the static wasn't there when I measured it. Uh, so we are redoing this. Uh, the first arrow that you see there is the burn point and the second is the atmospheric interface. So that was all green. We got it to all green and then after getting it all green, I pulled the orbit down so that it is at a 1.4 degree angle instead of one. You see that produces a negative periapsis after we do the burn and um, takes a bit more to do the retro burn like that. So that's a little bit sad, but uh, we'll sort of play around with that. Maybe 1.2 will be nicer. For NASA, there were a lot of additional considerations. A lot of it had to do with weather when it came to when they uh, re-entered and how they re-entered and you know where they ended up landing. So weather in particular is not a consideration in Kerbal Space Program. And in this case, we're lined up directly with Cape Canaveral. We're directly in line with it. Sometimes they might not have been because they were waiting for weather to clear up or something like that. So yeah, it's complicated or lighting conditions, who knows. Uh, but yeah, here I am starting the entry script and we have auto and then auto flaps and auto uh, brakes. And we have the approach set there. And here it goes. So, 
Initially it doesn't do anything wild, but then once it starts turning at about 80 kilometers, it goes right to banking really hard, which it shouldn't do. Right now, right now it's coming in very steeply, it's falling short. It really shouldn't start out with uh, such a hard bank. And yeah, so it's, it's not planning ahead quite enough here. And you know, this is presumably how the actual entry guidance would have operated, but I don't know if it's the best idea. <laughs> but anyway, uh, on the other hand, if I tried to re-enter this, I'd be going like, "There's no way we could get back." Uh, if we eventually take, we'll eventually take a look at the map to see. But anyway, right now the little box is basically what it's trying to command the shuttle to do, and the little shuttle icon is where the shuttle's at in terms of drag. It's basically in terms of drag. Um, as long as the box isn't stuck on the right side, it's probably in a better shape. But as you can see here on the map, uh, we're like ending up in the Pacific Ocean. So uh, if I was controlling this, I'd be like, oh, this doesn't look good. But that's why we need an entry script, uh, either the one I had written before or this one, because it's very hard to tell with Earth otherwise exactly how you're doing. You'll have to get little landmarks, you know, how far away you are at one point and stuff like that. But still, it's very difficult unless you have something controlling it. Or at least a graph like this as a reference. As you can see, as we hit the bottom line there, it uh, moderates the roll and we are in better shape here. Really, what I'm looking for is about a 30 to 60 degree angle, preferably around 45-ish. Um, as far as what I would visually like to see. I mean, it's sort of an aesthetic thing, but so th this right now is good. It's more moderate, but I feel like it's not doing quite enough to get back to the center. It's like satisfied with just being at that bottom line. And that's going to end up being a little bit of a problem because it's satisfied with just having the, the minimum amount of energy that it'll need instead of trying to get back to a more uh, moderate amount of energy. So here we are, we did a roll reversal over Mexico, already getting further along than I thought, and we're heading uh, in between Boca Chica and Tampico. Uh, my Tampico site will be off to the right pretty soon, but yeah, it's, it, I mean, this angle is fine as far as what I would want to see, except I think it should be turning less. There's Tampico over there. Uh, it's still sort of right at that bottom line and that's going to cause problems. So, yeah. But anyway, I was happy to see that it actually managed to make it to the Gulf of Mexico at all. Still going pretty slow. It certainly has different dynamics than the shuttle I previously was using. And that's because it has substantially tweaked aerodynamics and a custom version of Firm Aerospace Research by Giulio Dondi so that it actually matches what the shuttle is supposed to do. So, yeah. Here we are coming down. If I had to compare how it is compared to the old, older version, midway through re-entry, it seems to get less drag, and then right at the end on landing, it seems to get more. It seems to get less lift at that point. So, yeah. So it's a little bit harder to glide with it right at the end, but it seems to glide a little bit better at this point. It uh, covered a lot more distance than I thought it would given the speed. So, okay, well, it is getting there. It has pitched down a bit too, to help itself out. And we are actually making it to Florida, amazingly enough. So it managed to deal with the situation, even though I've messed with it and given it a descent angle that was not what it was expecting, potentially, potentially not what it was expecting. Uh, but it has ended up too far north. And because of the way it was handling energy earlier, it doesn't have enough ability to turn towards Cape Canaveral properly right now. And so it's limiting itself because well, it was limiting itself until I changed the runway. Now that I changed the runway to 15 and told it to fly straight in, it's turned a little bit more. But uh, it just didn't quite understand the final energy situation because you can see the little shuttle icon was a little bit low there. Uh, now it's sort of in the middle of the range, which is interesting. Uh, so the transition between the previous entry page and this one, I, I don't know how that works out. But here, uh, as you can see, even though we thought we were falling short, we're very much 
too energetic. We have too much energy approaching the runway. And so we need to change the runway again because there's no way we're going to make 15, which would be straight in like this. And so we need to go back to 33 and I change it back to 33 and it automatically goes to overhead. But yeah, this little dance with the runways, maybe we should have just kept it the original one, but it still didn't seem like it was going to be turning fast enough. It still isn't turning fast enough. If it was me, I would probably be pitching down right now. I, I wouldn't want to stay high like this. Uh, it, you get more of a grip with the atmosphere if you're lower, and so it's easier to turn. Uh, your turn rate is higher if you're lower in thicker atmosphere. So, yeah. Overall, this ain't great. And so I turn it to fly-by-wire. That's what CSS means on the DAP. And ultimately, I turn it off because even the fly-by-wire was stopping me from turning because it doesn't want the shuttle to get out of control because, because as they say, it is fundamentally imbalanced without the fly-by-wire. Uh, though, you know, uh, I've flown so many completely imbalanced planes before, <laughs> I, I, I can actually sort of fly it. Uh, I've got SAS on there. SAS isn't great at holding this. It's certainly not a fly-by-wire. It's not like the equivalent of that. Um, I can switch to smart ASS, which I will, which is also not a fly-by-wire. Atmospheric autopilot would be a fly-by-wire, but you can't use atmospheric autopilot with the re-entry program that we have, so it'll mess it up. So we do not have atmospheric autopilot installed, otherwise it would help right now. And Giulio Dandi did say that he tried to make it compatible with atmospheric autopilot, but couldn't. The atmospheric autopilot changes something that doesn't work quite right with this entry script. So anyway, here we're pretty high up, so we have some energy, but uh, managing that is difficult. Uh, the reason I killed the script is because it was preventing me from using RCS at this point. So, But then I left it off for some reason. But anyway, we are sort of aiming for the skid strip here. And there's a runway that we can use, but it's not going to be easy to get to it. Especially because of the imbalance in the shuttle, I have trouble keeping the speed safely and gliding. I turn on the OMS engines to dump fuel and try to get something out of them while we're still higher up. But yeah, we're losing the speed too much and ultimately we're going really slow. And we are not going to make it to the skid strip. Perhaps if I had taken control earlier or we hadn't switched the runways like that, uh, it would have been a little bit better. But yeah, on, on the whole, the script did a better job of getting here than I expected, considering I had changed the parameters. And I think I liked the bank angles that it was using, the roll angles that I was using more on this reentry than the previous one. And so it's just a matter of trying to figure out as our aerodynamics go completely whacked here. Uh, and then we're going to encounter the water physics of Kerbal Space Program. Um, it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to get it to the runway safely after that. And of course, in real life, the shuttle pilots actually did bring it to the runway manually. They didn't rely on the script to or the pro program to land it. They did use fly-by-wire, but that's not the same as having the effectively autopilot land the plane. So yeah, we'll see what I can do about that. Uh, maybe I should just accept the higher roll angles and run with it since it, that at least seems to work. But experimentation is fun. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.